In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, Kalimerasas. May God's grace be with all of us on this day and throughout this coming week. And I pray that you will have an opportunity to share your faith with someone in need of God's love and compassion. Today we commemorate four saints, a mother and her three daughters. The daughters were 12 years of age, 10 years, and nine years. They refused to give up their faith in Jesus Christ. It was during the time of the Roman Empire. It was in the early part of the second century, about 126. You can look at your hymn sheet and there is information there. We also will remember later Placidus, who was a general in the Roman Empire, and as he was hunting one day, he came upon a mysterious stag in the forest who had a cross between its antlers. And a voice spoke to him. It is from that experience that he gave up his pagan faith and became Christian and his whole family became Christian. They were asked to, as a general of the Roman Empire by the emperor, to give sacrifice to the pagan gods. He refused to do so. He was tortured, and he and his family were martyred as well. I don't know whether we understand this act of martyrdom in the Christian church. We have witnessed in years past that people have been killed because of their faith in faraway lands. But it doesn't really come to us. We are blessed here in America to have been insulated from such drastic means to convert or to keep people in a certain faith, a certain belief, a certain mindset. It doesn't seem that as the gospel shares with us today, things have changed very much. The Lord says that in this adulterous and sinful generation, anyone who is ashamed of me and my father, we will also be ashamed of them rather harsh words coming from the Lord. But he came and he lived with us. He lived all of 33 years. The last three years were his ministry to humanity to give us not just an example, but to open up the scriptures, the Old Testament, and how the Old Testament shares with us in prophecy the coming of a Messiah, someone who will save humanity. It doesn't seem that things have changed very much. We still hope and pray that our children will somehow embrace the faith, but as I see, and perhaps many from this vantage point, see that generations, each and every generation, there's a little bit less commitment to the church. There's a little bit less commitment to living the kind of faith that would in earlier times place one's life in jeopardy. We will all raise our hands and say, we are willing to give up our life because of our faith in Jesus Christ. But it came to the moment when you would have to fulfill that promise. 
how many of us would be able to do so, whether we were 12 or 10 or 9, or whether we were 30 or 70 or 100 years of age. How many of us could do that? How many of us are willing to give up everything we have to deny ourselves, as the gospel speaks today, and follow Jesus Christ? How many of us consider that denial, and part of that denial, is the life that we seem to enjoy here, the blessings that the Lord, that we say the Lord gives us, but he expects us to use those gifts for the betterment of the world around us. But how many of us really do that? And yes, there is always that conversation that if people do good things, isn't that good enough, Father? But we learn in Scripture that doing good in the name of Jesus Christ is what is required of us. What is the reason why you're doing good things? Is it to get something in return? Is it because you were taught to do that, but you didn't really think about it? Or is it because you really believe in Jesus Christ and because he asks us to do these things that we follow what he asks us to do? But to this morning, he says, anyone who wishes to follow me, let him deny himself and let him take up his cross and follow me. And what is that cross? What is the cross? It was a symbol of death, but for all Christians, it is a symbol of victory. Victory from what? Victory from evil? And what is the evil that you have denied? Is it the glory of the world? Is it the wealth of the world? Is it the power of the world? Is it everything that the world gives us? And certainly we raise our children to believe that if you go and get a good education and you find a good job and you do all these things, that you are fulfilling something about your faith in Jesus Christ? Or do our children fulfill something that we want them to fulfill? And do they really think about what they're doing as they're growing and maturing? Are they successful because they know that that success can help others? Are they successful because that is their main goal, to be successful? Are they successful because it will bring them fame and fortune? So why does Father Peter talk about these things now? Because now is the time of our salvation. We don't know if we have the next moment or the next day. We know that we have right now. And what are we asked to give up? What is the denial that the gospel speaks of today? What is the denial before we take up the cross of Christ? To deny ourselves what? All of the things that the world offer? Or is it simply to deny ourselves the simple pleasures that we enjoy in living the kind of life that is not in keeping with the teachings of Jesus Christ. We may call that a sinful life. And somehow we cringe every time we hear the word sin because we are really not sinners, at least most of us don't believe we really do anything bad. We put in those categories murder, we put in those categories of extortion. We quit in those categories betrayal. But we really don't put in the category of sin our own imperfection. And to become perfect, the Lord says to the lawyer, give up everything, give it to the poor, and come follow me. To be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. But not many of us can do that. This woman that we remember today, this mother of three daughters, she witnessed the death of her daughters. 
And she went to their grave after they were martyred. And in such great sorrow, because of that, the church also considers to be her to be a martyr along with her daughters. And that is Sophia, along with three daughters of faith, hope, and love are commemorated today. And of Placidus the general and his family, Saint Eustathius, who saw this vision of a cross between the antlers of a stag, a deer. And a voice spoke to him. We may not be put in that particular situation ever, but that doesn't mean that we should not at least listen to what Jesus tells us in Scripture and asks us to live this kind of life. We want our children to live this kind of life, but as they grow and mature, they begin to embrace more of the world around them, and it becomes more difficult. You have an infant, it's easy to pick up an infant, and you put the infant here or there. You can move them anywhere you want. But the minute the infant begins to grow and mature, and they become young, and they begin to develop their own mind, you may want them to go over here, but they decide to go over there. And then they become teenagers, and they have their own mind about everything. And then you become the dumbest person in the world for a few years only. And then when they reach into their 20s, they begin to see perhaps the wisdom that is, that comes from you as parents and as grandparents. They may still stray. They may still want to have their own way about things, but at least they have received a very good foundation. And we can only hope and pray that that foundation is so strong that they will remember the things that they experience as young children in the family. Three daughters knew that very well. They were willing to give their own life because they had denied themselves every worldly pleasure and accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they were willing to give up their life because of that faith. We hear many things in today's world about belief and what people accept in terms of their thinking. Gone in every direction possible. And I think perhaps things are going to get worse before they get better. But the words of Jesus Christ remain the same forever. He who wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. The cross of faith, the cross of victory, the cross of peace, the cross of fulfillment, the cross of salvation. And may that cross be for each of us, the cross that we are willing to pick up and to carry because our faith helps us in that struggle. Our faith helps us in that life as a Christian. Amen.